All right, we are in a series called Don't Feed the Wildlife. Don't Feed the Wildlife. Today we're talking about Don't Feed the Fear. Don't Feed the Fear. So let's look at this picture. Can we got that picture we can throw up there? There it is. Please be safe. Do not stand, sit, climb, or lean on fences. If you fall, animals could eat you. And that might make them sick. Thank you. We don't want to make any wildlife sick. (laughs) We certainly don't want to be eaten. So uh, don't feed the wildlife. So there's things in that can come in our lives that can, that if we feed it, it will be like wildlife that will, could eat us. It can harm us. And one of the things is fear. So we don't want to feed fear. Do you realize that you have control? That you can uh, be full of faith or you can be full of fear. So fear is a major issue in our society. Fear's the umbrella, we could say, of stress, worry, anxiety, and depression. So the root of that is fear. And so we want to overcome and not feed fear. And all of us, I think, at some level can identify with the temptation to fear. And that fear that can come and try to overwhelm us and uh, debilitate us and destroy us. Sixty million people in the United States experience some type of impairment due to anxiety. Sixty-five percent are on prescription drugs. Forty-three percent of these are mood-altering drugs. Now I will say this, that I believe that God has given wisdom for medication. And if you need that, you take it. Instead of being uh, allowed to, uh, because sometimes it's a chemical process in our brain. And our brains need a connection uh, that for some reason needs to be healed. And that's okay. You know, thank God for medication. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for for his help. uh, And through these people and through medications that will help us. So I'll just say that. But, so my point is, is that anxiety and fear is prevalent in our society. And uh, we need help. We need God's help. And so our society is so stressful that it's harder and harder to cope. And some people will try to self-medicate and become addicted to alcohol and drugs, things like that, because of the anxiety and fear that they are experiencing. Uh, Now today, of course, fear tries to enter into college campuses, uh, high schools, middle school. Uh, There's a lot of uh, difficulty in coping with all the onslaught of things in this world. One of them, of course, that's a little bit newer than what I had to face when I was going to middle school, high school, and college is social media. Social media. Uh, Some of the things that can happen because of social media is FOMO, fear of missing out. You've, you know, it causes you to have fear that you're missing out on things because you see all the what other people are doing and enjoying and how perfect their life is and things like that. Of course, we know that that's a false representation. Uh, ultimately, uh, we can on social media we can get negative feedback, whereas before, you know, you just see a few of your friends. And right now, now everything can be open to the whole world through social media. Cyberbullying, stressful events that you see of, that others are facing, uh, and things that are happening in the world that you wouldn't be aware of. Uh, pressure to post. You pressure, you feel pressure, you've got to post something awesome because others are, press, are posting something awesome. And you know, you need to get a lot of likes. You're not getting a lot of likes, you know. So all these things, uh, you can, can become addicted to social media. People 
can't put their phones down because they've got to see how many likes they get. They've got to see, and it actually triggers a dopamine effect uh, in your brain. These social media sites are designed to get you hooked, to keep you on. Uh, that's how they make money. That's how they have advertisements and so forth. By how many people are clicking and on their sites. Uh, you might see on these social media, wow, they had a party and I wasn't invited. You know, things like that. We begin to compare ourselves with others. What they're doing and what their lifestyle is like. And we think that we are less than. So all these things can invade our hearts and our minds and cause us to fear and have great anxiety. Well, the solution to that is to align your thoughts with Christ. We need to do that because there's great pressure that fear can bring and it causes the blood pressure to rise. It causes harm and suffering. It causes hopelessness. It causes suicides. Uh, All these things are not what we need and what we want in our lives. Fear has everything to do with our minds. One of the definitions of fear is an uneasiness. A restlessness of the mind. An uneasiness, a restlessness of the mind. You ever find your mind just racing? And usually it's racing with what? Negative thinking, negative thoughts. And it's like a loop you can't get out of sometimes. And it takes over and that causes you to have an uneasiness, that causes you to have a dread, that causes you to have restlessness, causes you uh, to have a pattern. That causes emotions of fear to be brought up into your entire being. And so fear has everything to do with our minds, our thought patterns, our belief systems. Aren't you glad that we can believe in the risen Christ and put our faith in Him? And that we can have triumph and victory over all the fear that comes against us. It's why Romans 12.2 tells us to break this pattern and be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So if fear grips you, if fear tries to take over, we go to the Word of God. We go to His promises. We go to His truths. We enjoy worshiping Him and being in His presence and allowing His love and His power To fill our entire being. When we align our thoughts with the mind of Christ, it protects our lives. And it gives us our faith that needs to arise in God. It says in Philippians 2.5, it says you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. We are to have the same way of thinking. We are to have the same attitude. What is your attitude? It should be the same that Christ Jesus had. Because why? Jesus was a man just like us. Of course, he was the Son of God. He was fully God, fully man, but he was a man. And he kept emphasizing that to everyone. The Son of Man, the Son of Man. Because if he was not the Son of Man, if he was not uh, fully uh, man, he would not have been able to pay for the sins of the world. But because he was the Son of God and fully God, come from heaven, he had the p- capacity to pay the price for the sins of all. And he was perfect and holy. So, But you never see, even the man Jesus, you never see him uh, have any fear. Think about that. We do see different places where he had compassion. He had compassion. He's looking over Jerusalem. He's looking over. Then he had such great compassion. He he wept. And we know that uh, he loved. We know that he had sorrow. We know he had anger. And we talked about anger. He had holy anger. Righteous anger. And so Jesus had these emotions, but we never see him fear. He he always tapped into the power of his Father. He did not allow the weakness of his flesh to control him. 
So we are going to operate either in fear or we're going to operate in faith. And so uh, here's a sphere of fear. A sphere of fear. Let's watch this video. (laughs) Some people say I'm being fearful or maybe even paranoid. My friends call this thing my sphere of fear. But I think I'm being practical. You know, sometimes people get cuts and scrapes and scabs and bruises, but not me. I'm smarter than that. I've got my bubble. It protects me from everything. Yeah, sure, it looks a little strange, maybe even a little weird now. But you know what? I think one day everyone's going to have their own bubble. It's just, it's kind of ridiculous. You know, I, I love the guy. But we can't do anything together. I mean, it just changes everything when we try to hang out. It's hard and it's frustrating to, to be hanging out with him when we can't do anything. I can't even drive him in my car to go get some Dell. We just can't do anything. Yeah, I guess some things are pretty tricky. It's hard to play Frisbee. Uh, it's hard to go for a swim. And uh, I really haven't been able to give anyone a hug in a while. He's afraid um, to, to be in the real world. He's afraid to get hurt. There's a lot to be afraid of out there. You know, you got bees, mosquitoes, dogs, bunny rabbits. Yeah, that's right. Bunny rabbits. Have you seen the teeth on those little guys? Um, it, it's just frustrating because it's such a silly thing, and I don't know why he does it. Everything that we do, uh, the bubble gets in the way. We can't play frisbee. We can't play dodgeball. It, he kind of cheats when we play dodgeball because I can't hit the guy. This circle of fear that he's in just gets in the way because it's, he's trapped in it and we can't do anything because of that. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a bummer for us as, as friends to be hanging out because it ruins everything. There's no activity that we can do together. It's worth it because there's a lot to be afraid of out there and there's nothing getting inside my sphere of fear. I'm protected. I got nothing to be afraid of. Are you ever afraid that you'll run out of air? Run, run out of air? Oh boy, I guess I never really thought about that. I only have so much air in here. Help! Somebody get me out of here! Well, we can't separate ourselves from the things of the world, and so we we can, instead of having a sphere of fear, we can have a sphere of faith and uh, and meet all the circumstances head on with God's truth and God's Holy Spirit. F.B. Meyer said, he said, unbelief, which leads to fear, unbelief puts our circumstance between us and God. But faith puts God between us and our circumstances. Let's have faith in the truth of our loving God to put Himself between us and our circumstances. Second Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So we have the power of God. We have the love of God. We have the spirit that allows us to have self-discipline. Fear is not just an emotion. It's not just a feeling of weakness, but there are spiritual forces out there that would cause us to fear. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, the serpent, he comes to Eve and says, Did God really say? Did God really say? And begins to cause her to doubt. What did God really say? And then he outright, li- outright lied and says, no, eating from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil will not cause you to die. And so anyway, doubt came in. She sinned. Adam sinned. And then what is the next thing that happened? They hid from God. And why did they hide from God? It says that they feared God. Genesis 3.10. says, I was afraid. God's talking. says, why did you hide? says, I was afraid. I was afraid. Disobedience and, and sin. Doubt has caused fear to enter into the heart of the first man. And, and Eve, the first woman. 
I was afraid. So what are you feeding? They should have kept feeding on the promise of God and the fellowship that they had with God. But they allowed doubt to come in. They disobeyed God. And they sinned. And now they're afraid. What are you feeding? You cannot entertain and feed something that is dangerous. It will bring destruction. There was a a television documentary, a film called Grizzly Man in 2005. About a man... Uh, His name was Timothy Treadwell. Um, He was a bear enthusiast. And he went out for 13 summers in Alaska to be with the bears and to observe the bears. And, And he felt like that he had come to a place where the bears accepted him. And he was safe. Well, that final summer, uh, he and his girlfriend were killed by the bear. And so, um, so I won't go into any of the grisly details, but he thought he was accepted. Sometimes we think we're accepted by those things that can destroy us. We cannot allow fear to remain in our lives because it's like a grizzly bear. It'll make you comfortable. You'll, you'll think that, you know, it's just part of life and you begin to keep feeding that, that fear. And next, you find that it destroys you. Fear is designed to destroy you. And what God has put in your life, He wants you to accomplish those things, but fear wants you to dread, to to prohibit you from moving forward in your life. Overcome fear by knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. How do we overcome? It says in Romans 8, 15 and 16, it says, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. How do we overcome fear? Know who you are in Christ. You're a son of the living God. You're a daughter of the living God. You are connected to divine power. He's given us that spirit of power and love and self-discipline. We never have to face life alone. We always have Him with us. We no longer have to let trouble, stress, irritability and fear be the routine of our lives. We'll always be tested. We'll always have opportunities to fear. The emotions might try to overwhelm you. But... You have authority in Christ Jesus because you have His power. Fear only rules our lives when we have a loose connection with God, our Father. We must tap into the power of God that overrides fear. You know, the Bible says that God is a warrior who triumphs over His enemies. Remember Samson. He was weak in himself. He sinned. He did not do all the things that he should have done. We know his weaknesses and his failures. But any time the anointing of God came upon him, he was a mighty warrior and destroyed the enemy. Gideon became a mighty warrior when the Spirit of God was upon him. Even though we see him at first hiding. (laughs) Hiding away trying to... uh, reap the harvest so that they would have food. God caused him to be a mighty warrior when the anointing and grace of God was upon him. David had faith in God to face the giant, to face the difficulty, to face that warrior who struck all of the Israelites with great fear. They would not face Goliath, but he knew his God. He knew God was with him. He knew that... His grace and His power would cause Him to triumph over Goliath. We are not created to be controlled or live in fear. As it debilitates us and destroys our lives. It prohibits us from the victory God has for us. See, there are things in our lives that are worth fighting for. We need to fight for our marriages. We need to fight... For our kids. We need to fight for our church and our friendships. We need to fight for our nation. We need to stand on biblical truth. And not allow fear to deter us. 
Things that are good and beautiful need protection and are worth rising up and being the mighty warriors of God to resist that. And what will try to stop us from doing that? Fear. Fear will try to stop us from being the mighty warriors that God has all called us to be. We're all in the army of the Lord. And things are worth fighting for. Why do we have wonderful medical doctors? Why? They're fighting for our health. They're fighting for our lives. They're fighting against sickness and disease uh, along with all those in the medical profession. They're there to help us heal. Teachers fight for the future of our kids. Godly teachers fight for us that our students might grow in the things that they need to go forward in this world. Police and firemen and all those civil servants fight for our safety. And they need to rise up and take hold of that which would cause destruction. And they would have fear to prevent it. But of course with training and with renewing of their minds, they're able to to know the right tools to use. And that is the same with us. When we have on the armor of God, we have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we put that Spirit of God's truth into our mouths and speak it out. We have the tools we need to resist fear and resist the enemy. Nothing is impossible to those who believe. Luke chapter 9 verse 51 says, Now when the time was almost come for Jesus to be received up to heaven, He steadfastly and determinedly set His face to go to Jerusalem. I like this. He steadfastly and determinedly set His face to go to Jerusalem. Jesus had to take courage. Jesus had to realize He was headed to the cross and His flesh repelled at the thought But he knew that God's will was to be done. He steadfastly, determinedly set his face to go to Jerusalem. It says in the Message Bible, he gathered up his courage and steeled himself for the journey to Jerusalem. He was on a mission for the salvation of all of us. And he could not be stopped by fear. Boy, I'm sure he was tempted to fear. I'm sure he was in that garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed that there's another way. There's another uh, way to this to happen. Take this cup from me. But he says, I will drink of the cup. And I'm so glad that he did. Remember Jesus after fasting for 40 days at the beginning of his ministry. Ministry. Jesus was weak in body. He was weak in mind because he had not eaten. And as Satan attacked and tempted him at his weakest. You know, many times we, when we're tired, when we are low, the enemy strikes. And fear tries to take over us. He tries to cause us to doubt. He tries to fill us with anxiety. But Jesus responded, not with just thinking in his mind, but he spoke the word of truth. Whatever the temptation was, he says, it is written. It is written. With the authority of God's word, the attempter has to flee. It also says in Acts 16, 16 through 18, it says, once when we were going to the place of prayer, talking this is the Apostle Paul, We were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Well, sounds pretty good at first, doesn't it? But after a while, this happened so much that it began to be a distraction. It began to uh, be a mocking of who they were and what God had called them to do. And verse 18 says, She kept this up for many days. For many days. Has fear, has the enemy tried to attack you for many days? Finally, Paul became so troubled. See, this was troubling to him. This had caused uh, difficulty for him and the ministry he was doing. 
Finally, because he became so troubled, he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. And when God reveals to us what the root cause is, whether it's a spirit, whether whatever it is, he will give us his power and his authority. Because greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. He's given us the name that's above every name. Jesus said all authority has been given to him. Paul uses that authority to speak a command to the spirit that was mocking and troubling them. See, they could have tried to deal with the person, but the person was not the issue. It was the spirit behind that person. So when you're suddenly faced with a situation where fear, anxiety, and like a cloud envelops you and depression comes over you, you must recognize that the greater one lives inside of you and you have the authority to speak to any spirits of fear that try to come, any uh, forces of darkness that try to take you under. 1 John 4.4 4 says, Little children, you are of God. You belong to Him and have already defeated and overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist, because He who lives in you is greater mightier than he who is in the world. The greater one lives on the inside of you. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, He, by the Holy Spirit, dwells in you. And He's given His name to you. He's given His name that's above every name. And we rise up, we command fear, we command stress, we command anxiety, we command doubt, we command all these things to be gone from our lives. To be gone off our life and off of our family. I believe that we should all stand. And let's do that today. Let's declare ourselves victorious. And we are going to speak to the enemy that would be the enemy of our soul. That cause fear and anxiety to come. Say this after me. Say, I command you, Satan. I command you, fear. I command you, doubt. Anxiety. And stress. To be gone in the name of Jesus. I am free in Jesus' mighty name. He has given me a spirit of power. He has given me a spirit of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. Now let's just thank Him, Lord. We thank You for victory in our lives. Thank You that we have the authority that the greater one lives in us. Thank You, Father. I bless each one here today. Whatever they're facing, whatever mountain, whatever giant they're facing, we know that God is with us and He has given us the tools of the kingdom. He has given us the sword of the Spirit. He has given us the shield of faith. He has caused us to mount up with wings of eagles and we shall overcome every obstacle, every doubt, every sickness, every disease because the greater one lives in us and we are victorious in Him. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord.